But it is the crazy ones like us. It is the ambitious ones like us. It is the motivated, the driven, the impatient, crazy, absolutely like dream focused ones like us that create change in this world. Welcome to the Bedros Koolian Show. Hey, what's going on, friends? Welcome to the Bedros Koolian Show. I'm Bedros Koolian, and we've got a great episode teed up for you today. Today, we are going to talk about why you are built different. And it's actually okay to be built different. And it's not okay to try and run away from being built the way you are. And I'm going to explain that in just a moment with a story I'm going to tell you. But before I do, I want to remind you, Bedros Koolian Live, September 13th and 14th in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. I want you to join us for two days of money, meaning, and self-mastery. I want to see you guys grow into your highest level selves, 2.0 selves. I want you to make more money. I want you to have more meaning and purpose. And I want you to develop in terms of self-mastery. And if you can do that, you will enjoy life and you will be free and you will never have to look at the opposition for money because you will produce all the money that you want. September 13th, 14th, Scottsdale, Arizona. Go to bedrosschooling.com forward slash live for that. With that in mind now, let's talk about the thing that this episode is about which is the bone that I have to pick with some of you and um, man the cool thing about this fucking podcast is that I get to run into a lot of you guys at different gyms that I work out at across the country like when I when I travel and do speaking gigs um, I work out at different gyms and people are always coming up to me and I think it's super awesome that you guys come up and say hello and tell me what episode you like and what you do etc and you recognize me but then I hear most of you tell me like, hey, I, uh, I, uh, I don't fit into my family or don't fit into my friend group or my coworkers are very different than I am. And I'm like, dude, that's because you're built different. Why are you trying to adapt to this normal peasant way of living when you're built different and you are built for a purpose. I believe God or your creator has built each and every single one of us a certain way. And with some of us, he sprinkled in a little bit of crazy. He sprinkled in a little bit of more ambition. He sprinkled in a little bit more charisma. He sprinkled in a little bit more impatience. And you think there's something wrong with you, but there isn't. And allow me to tell you a story more of a parable than a story, but here it is. So uh, imagine this, a, a farmer find, finds an egg and he realizes that, oh wow, this is a, an eagle's egg. And he goes to his farm and he goes into the hen house and he puts this little eagle egg underneath one of his hens. And as a few weeks go by, as the eggs underneath this hen begin to hatch, so does the little eagle. And this little eagle is hanging out with all the little chicks and the mama hen is marching it around the farm and, you know, it's picking at the soil. And so it sees all the other little chicks pecking at the soil. And so it begins to peck at the soil and it begins to eat little worms out of the ground and bugs. And so it does what a chicken does. The only difference is this is not a chicken. It's a baby eagle. And so as it cruises around and eats worms and bugs and tries to fly like a chicken would, you know, two or three steps at a time, short little bouts of flights. This eagle one day as it gets older, looks up into the sky. Lo and behold, it sees this beautiful, majestic thing flying high up in the sky. And it turns to mama hen and says, hey, what is that up there? And mama hen says, well, that is a eagle. That is the bird of the sky that is the most majestic bird of all. But we are just chickens and we are the bird of the ground. And while they hunt and they soar and they're majestic, we eat bugs and worms and peck around the dirt. Now this eagle who was now older can't help but every day as it gets out of the hen house, looking up towards the sky ambitiously towards that eagle with this desire to want to soar high, to want to spread its wing. However, this eagle continues to hang out with these chickens and acts like the chickens and lives like the chickens and thinks that it's a chicken, but deep down inside, it's got this burning desire to soar and explore and be majestic. 
That, my friend, is you. You are built different. That eagle didn't realize that it was built different. While it felt the burning desire to soar and to, and to climb high and to spread its wings, it didn't have the guts, it didn't have the balls it needed to be able to spread its wings and fly like an eagle would, to be this beautiful, majestic, graceful bird that is just awe-inspiring. And when you think about every single person that has created any level of change in this world, they are eagles, aren't they? And not chickens. They are tightly wound. They are type A. They are driven. They are ambitious. They are impatient. They are game changers. They, they are the type of people that have these crazy ass vision, right? Of what things could be, how life should be, how technology could evolve, how we can put people on Mars, how we can colonize Mars and how we can grow in terms of humanity to a much higher place of consciousness and how they can innovate using technology and science and, and, and bring people together. But most people, the majority just want to cluck around at the dirt and peck and look for bugs and worms. But the eagles of the human race think differently because they're built differently and they don't feel like they blend in. Now, here's the difference. Those eagles that are amongst the chickens of humanity, most of them continue to cluck around like chickens, even though they know that they're meant for more, they should be doing more, they are built different, that they don't fit in at the parties on the weekends, and they don't want to watch TV all day long, and they don't want to gossip about Kim fucking Kardashian and her gelatinous ass, right? But instead, they feel like, well, if I don't fit in, and if I don't act like them, they're going to they're gonna see me as an outcast. They're gonna see me as someone who doesn't fit in. And they're gonna say there's something wrong with me. When in reality, there is something wrong with you. You are an eagle, my friend. You are a person of change. You are someone who can really change the course of humanity, but it takes faith for you to spread your wings, for you to fly, and for you to be laughed at by the chickens of humanity because that will tell you there's nothing special about you. Hey guys, quick interruption to the show. Let me tell you all about the Truly Wellness Shot. If you're like me and you care about your health, hydration, and building a strong immune system so you can stay active and you can get after it in life, then you wanna try the Truly Wellness Shot. I used to take 11 different supplements in the morning, things like vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin B12, echinacea, ginger, and a whole bunch more. Now it's all included in the Truly Wellness Shot. I wanna send you a 30-day supply for 50% off. Just go to truly.com use the code word bedros my name to get 50 percent off you also get free shipping you get a 30-day unconditional money back guarantee and one dollar of every order goes to shriners children's hospital and when you use the code word bedros and do the subscribe and save which is a truly tribe program every month you'll get a fresh supply of truly wellness shots for an additional 20 percent off and free shipping and one dollar of every monthly order will go to shriners children's hospital so go to truly.com use code word bedros and take advantage of this amazing Amazing offer. Now back to the show. And this is what I had learned about myself. I knew with every fucking job I had, whether I worked at Disneyland as a busboy or at, uh, at Oz, the gay club as a bouncer or at 24 hour, well, not 24 hour fitness. I, for a while, actually, there was a two week period in my life. I worked at 24 hour fitness, but there was about a good year and a half that I worked at LA fitness as a personal trainer. I did not fit in. I liked some of the people, but I did not fit in with the employee-minded people. I did not like the idea of no matter how hard I work, I still get paid the same as everybody else. I had different ideas. I had different ambitions. I felt like I was cut from a different cloth. I felt like I was meant for more. I felt like they think differently than I do. They were looking forward to the to Fridays so that they can take the weekends off. I was looking forward to Fridays for a different reason because I wanted to create my own business. I wanted to create my own path. I wanted to beat my own path. I wanted to change the course of how things are done. And I figured I only had weekends to do it. Why would I go out and party and drink and smoke weed, right? And make no mistake about it, back then I did. I did some partying. But every time I did, I was like, man, I didn't not getting any value from this. I feel like I, there's higher level stuff I could do. And if you feel that way, it's because you are cut from a different cloth, my friend. 
Most of you don't realize that you are meant for more. I'm speaking to a very few people right now who are the future game changers of humanity. I'm talking about the future Elon Musk's, the future Warren Buffett's, the future Jeff Bezos's, right? The future Bedros's, the people who are going to sit behind a mic and change the course of humanity by speaking truth into the masses, all while also being picked on and told that they are not right, that they do not fit in, that they are wrong in the way they think, because there's less of us and more of them. Of course, the masses are going to say that we're wrong. The masses are going to say that we're too intense. The masses are going to say that we're just living in these pipe dreams. The masses are going to say that we're taking these risks for no reason. Why would we take these risks when in reality we should just play it safe and go get a job and and be in credit card debt and just be 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 fat and be out of shape and 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 think like everybody else and let the opposition tell you how to live and act and think by listening to big mainstream media. That is not what you are meant to do. There's a small group of you that I'm talking to right now. And that small group of you know, you're like, fuck, this dude's talking to me right now. You know for a fact that you don't belong in your group of friends. Your family doesn't understand you. They think you're a risk taker. They think that you're lost in the clouds. They think that you're someone who has this like grandiose vision, but who is not capable of bringing that vision to, fru to, to fruition. And because of that, you believe it, you buy into it, and you begin to cluck around with them like the chickens that they are. When in reality, you, my friend, are an eagle. But unless you decide to climb up somewhere high and with faith, fling yourself off that edge and spread your wings, you're never gonna know what you're capable of. Like, this is exactly it for me. You know, I love my parents, man, I love them. They brought me here to the United States. We escaped communism, we escaped the Soviet Union. But then they were like, hey, go be a smog technician. You know, work, work in, some, in some garage, check in the, the pollutions that are coming out of that exhaust pipe from a car. Like that was the ambitions they had for me because they wanted me to have a safe job and they figured, look, everyone's got a car, everyone's got to drive. Why don't you be a smog technician and you'll have a secure paying, well-paying job? That's not what I wanted. That's not what I wanted. Yes, I was into cars and that's how my dad decided to lead me into being a smog technician. But just because I'm into cars does not mean I want to work on fucking cars and get my hands and fucking fingernails greasy. I want to own a lot of cars and that's exactly what I have today. I've got a fleet of cars. I've got the fucking cars that I want. I get to drive what I want. That's the lifestyle I wanted. And I knew that somewhere in me, the capacity to get there does exist, but no one else believed in me. And in fact, when I would share some of my ambitions with the people around me who I felt were family, who I felt were friends, who I felt were confidants, they would tell me that be careful, watch out what if it's too risky you might lose money what if it's embarrassing what if this doesn't work out what if you end up homeless you've never even graduated college you barely made it out of high school how are you ever going to do this and now look at me now right like this immigrant has built a multi-million dollar empire this immigrant is now in high demand on stages. This immigrant is now taking equity in other companies and scaling them faster than ever. This immigrant now has written an international bestseller, a Wall Street Journal bestseller. This immigrant now has a show on YouTube and on the podcast platforms that are in the top five of the categories. The point I'm making is that no one saw in me what I saw. What they see in you is that you should be just like them because everyone thinks that the person across from them is just like them. And so your parents, your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your friends, the people around you, your boss, your coworkers, think you're just like them. And they want you to play it safe. They tell you that you're not capable, not because they wanna shit on you, but believe it or not, they actually are trying to keep you safe. What you don't realize is that this is the worst advice they're giving you. What they should be telling you is, you know what? I think there's something different about you. It seems like when you come to these get togethers and these, these little parties and that you don't belong, you don't fit in. 
I bet you're meant for something more. I bet you're supposed to take risks. I bet you have more ambition than the rest of us. I bet that you have this burning desire in you to do something that none of us are willing to do, that we don't want to put our neck on the line, but I bet you're the kind of person that would. Now, wouldn't that inspire you if your friends, your family, your coworkers told you that? The reality is they're not going to tell you that, but it is the crazy ones like us. It is the ambitious ones like us. It is the motivated, the driven, the impatient, the crazy, absolutely like dream focused ones like us that create change in this world. You think about any big business, any big innovation, any big change in technology or the way we live our lives. It was done by someone like Steve Jobs, someone who saw the future before it ever existed, right? Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos. You and I have that capacity. I knew that I was more than just some immigrant kid who came from a communist country and now I live in the United States, I'm gonna go get a safe job. I knew I was more than that. There was just something inside me, just like that little eagle saying like, I'm supposed to be up there. But everyone around me wanted me to play safe. Everyone around me wanted me to be careful. They said that because they cared for me. They said that because they were transferring their own feelings onto me because they knew that they weren't capable of taking risks. They knew that they weren't capable of staying focused. They weren't capable of eating shit for a long period of time until they could finally figure it out. But I was like, I think I'm capable of doing all of that. Like shit, man, I lost 30 some odd pounds of fat in, 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 in high school, came back lean and jacked. If I was able to do that over summer break as a young man, maybe I'm capable of a lot more. But I'm here to tell you, man, the best advice I can give you is I waited too long to launch in business. I waited far too long. I wish I would have done it sooner. I had to get fired from multiple jobs before I realized I was unemployable. I hung around with enough people to realize these motherfuckers don't know what they're talking about, that they are all robots, that they are all cut from the same cloth, that they all want to over drink, over eat, over smoke, over TV, over video game. They have no ambition. They have no drive in life. They just want to be like the Joneses. I know you've heard that phrase, keeping up with the Joneses. I don't wanna keep up with the Joneses. I wanna build a fucking community where the Joneses live. I wanna fucking build a platform where the Joneses buy from me. I wanna do something that I can improve the quality of life for the Joneses because I believe that I'm an agent of change. And if you believe that within you, if you believe that there's something special about you, the moment you share that with others who don't have that same belief about themselves, they're gonna laugh at you. They're gonna say, it's too risky. Why would you quit such a good opportunity? What if you lose it all? Imagine how embarrassing it'll be when you fail, not if you fail, when you fail. In the meantime, you're like, no, I have a feeling I could fucking stick it out. I have a feeling I could go all in and fucking blast this idea to the moon. But what ends up happening is you buy into their stupid ideology of falling in line, of being one of them, of complying and marching to the beat that the opposition has set out for everyone. Go to school, go to college, find someone, marry them, get in debt, buy a little home, stay in debt, work a job that you hate, a spouse that you hate, a physique that you hate, kids that you hate, and die with hate and regret in your heart while in debt. That is the average person out there right now. But you and I were built different. I know I'm built different and I decided to bet on myself. And that's the number one thing that's missing on most of you guys right now is you are not betting on yourself. You are not putting the chips all in on yourself. Instead, you're playing it safe. You're trying to blend in with the chickens, knowing full well you're an eagle, you're meant to soar, but you're pecking at the fucking ground, eating dirt and bugs and worms and wondering 
why you've got this burning desire in you, why you don't fit in, why you have to pretend to be like them, while they actually enjoy the stupid life that they live, you have to pretend like you're enjoying the stupidity of the life that they live because you simply do not blend in. So when are you going to spread your wing? That is the question I wanna ask you. When are you gonna take that chance? When are you going to make that leap of faith? There's nothing guaranteeing you that you're gonna succeed. But if you are cut from the same cloth that I'm cut from, if you are built like I'm built, then when you fail, you'll dust yourself off and you'll try again. And when you fail again, you'll dust yourself off and try again. Think about how many times I've failed. If you've listened to the past episodes of the Bedros Cooling Show, you know that I, my first supplement company, TotalMuscle.com, failed so bad that I used my final rent money for my apartment to buy more supplements because all the other supplements had expired. And I was like, this is it. If I can just buy more supplements, I know it'll pop off and I could sell these things, right? This was back in 1997, before Google, before Facebook. I had one of the first websites out there, TotalMuscle.com, right? You can go fucking check it. Oh, well, I don't own this domain anymore, but I bet you can go to the Wayback Machine. On, on, if you Google Wayback Machine, you'll, you'll see that. And you'll also see that I fucking failed miserably. And I was kicked out of my apartment, and I lived in my Toyota pickup. I had multiple failures. But I looked at those failures as temporary defeats. And when you are cut from the cloth that we are cut from, we don't see failure as failure. We don't see failure as permanent. I see all failure as a temporary defeat, which means if I just dust myself off, create a new plan and ambitiously attack it, this time it'll work. And after doing that several times, it worked. And then it worked again. And then I started stacking wins on top of wins, on top of wins, on top of wins. One company became two, two became three, three became six. Now I'm seven companies in on equity and a whole bunch more. I've become a personal brand, not because of any other reason, not luck, not by chance, but because I knew I was built different. You know you're built different. And I decided to let my radiance shine. There was too many people around me who were stifling my radiance. Again, not because they wanted me to suffer and not have the life that I deserve, but because they felt that they couldn't do it. And if they can't do it, certainly no one can do it. At least that's how they think. When the reality is, you and I, my friend, we are built different. So I hope I'm speaking to the hearts of those who are supposed to hear this message. I know that the masses, a good 80, 90% of the masses, they are chickens clucking around, pecking at the dirt, looking for bugs and, and worms, and happy with a mediocre existence. But if you find yourself around them and you're like, I don't belong, there's something different about me, I have this burning desire to do more, be more, earn more, to build a fucking legacy, to be known, then you better take that risk. And when you do, you'll spread your wings and you'll fly with the eagles, my friend. So I hope you got a lot of value from this episode. I hope you're willing to make that leap of faith. And if you do, then I will see you at the top. And always remember this, my friends, that average is the enemy. Success is your responsibility. And change can take place in an instant if you are willing to flip the switch. I'll see you next time.